Hello everyone, the theme here, and before I do my raw report, um, just found out that you know another wrestler has passed. Now we just had a wrestler, Blackjack Mulligan, passed away, and now we have the passing of Balls Mahoney. Now I wasn't a particular fan of Balls Mahoney, but I do remember him, and I do remember him as far as giving his all to the wrestling business. Whenever he was in that ring, you know he actually perform pretty well and he is an ECW legend so don't let anything you know slide as far as that and as far as people you know having their opinions about how good or bad of a wrestler he was it's not about that all right it's about th this is a husband and a father that just passed away and he was 44 years old 44 is way too young to be passing away especially in this day and age and I'm not going to speculate on what has to um, do with his death or anything like that. Is Was it for all the damage in the ring? I, I'm not even going to go into that. But it's just kind of it, it, kind of nothing. It's very sad to see this. It's very sad that someone so young that had more years left, I just feel like that his life was just cut too short. It was just at the halfway point because this day and age, like I said, people are living to their... 70s 80s 90s even over 100 years and 44 man that's just way too short so uh boss mahoney um yeah just damn just can't believe it finding this out it's like damn you know we got i mean too many wrestlers passing away as it is and it's like man damn i just don't know what to say really it's just man Looks like uh, I'm just going to go and watch his older matches and, you know, just, yeah, it, yeah, this just sucks. Uh, rest in peace, Balls Mahoney. We'll miss you. Hello everyone, the theme here, and I'm gonna give my raw review slash report for April 11th, 2016. Now, just found out that uh, freaking Balls Mahoney passed away, and it's like, man. Okay, Axel Rotten passed away, you got Black Jack Mulligan that's gone, and now you have Balls Mahoney. Balls Mahoney was only 44, and I just did the video about that, and I'm just like, oh man, come on, dude, so. Enough about that, and I'm just going to get with the Raw report slash review. So it starts off with Shane McMahon. Now, Raw is, is in Los Angeles, and I'm from Los Angeles. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, I just didn't want to go to the show. I just didn't want to try to carry all of these things. And Yeah, because that's what I would have done. But, yeah, Shane comes out and does his little dance and stuff like that. And Shane's back in charge because of the overwhelmingly support from social media. And it's like, wait a second here. So social media has some type of pull when it comes to this. Then why the fuck are we still seeing Roman Reigns? Why the fuck was we all seeing Cena? Why the fuck do we see The Miz? I guarantee you that social media has ran motherfuckers down or ran motherfuckers up, and it didn't affect any of that. So I don't want to hear that shit, okay? That's just garbage, boosting up social media. Why? It doesn't need to be boosted up anymore. It's just, ah, anyway. So, oh, huh, Natalia versus Charlotte gets announced for the WWE Women's Championship. Okay, yeah, that, that's cool. A tag team tournament is announced, and the winner of the tag team tournament will be the number one contenders for the tag team championship, which is pretty cool. I like the idea of tournaments deciding the number one contender. I like the idea of that. As long as it doesn't take too long, and as long as there's not too much garbage or garbage people or garbage teams in the tournament that to just totally give away who the next challenger is going to be. I remember that Roman Reigns shit in November. We all knew damn well that he was going to be the number one contender and the winner of that fucking tournament. No, yeah, it wasn't even a number one contender. It was just... Him and I just, I called him and Dean in the finals and, oh, no, that was just fucking garbage. But this tag team tournament should be pretty good. It should provide certain matches, certain matches, 
and we had two of them on this Raw that was just like, what the fuck? Okay. And it was announced that Sami Zayn will get a shot at AJ Styles, and if Sami Zayn wins, then he'll be added to the match at Payback, and it'll be a triple threat for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And that's courtesy of Cameron Owens attacking Zayn from behind and taking him out before the Fatal 4-Way last week. Okay, Shane, you're heading in the right direction as far as making these matches and making shit that actually fucking means something. Keep this up. And a couple of things that I want to go over, but this is actually pretty fucking good. So, all right, cool. So Kevin Owen comes out and inter interrupts Shane, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm getting, yeah, 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 the normal complaining that an actual heel does. Now, he does have a point of saying that he needed his return match, his rematch for the Intercontinental Championship, but he doesn't get it that way. Instead, he had to earn his number one contender spot against Cesaro. Cesaro comes out, he's wearing suit, rips it off, and they actually have a pretty good fucking match. And Cesaro won that match. And it's like, okay, bravo. Okay. But I, I, I'm, I kinda, I'm kinda in fear of this at the same time because, because I can see where this can go. They were favoring Cesaro's shoulder during the match. And he's going to face this jizz fucker for the Intercontinental Championship. The problem with that is if Cesaro doesn't go in 100%, See, that's the only way that Jizz stands a serious fucking chance. Cesaro 100%, forget it. Just hand him the belt. Just here. That's it. It's not going to be a fucking match. Even if the Jizz has his French dude at ringside, it won't make a fucking difference. It'll just be a neutralizer within three minutes. And that'll be it. But Cesaro is favoring the shoulder. So that gives the Jizz a chance, a backdoor, and a, and a way out. And I, I just, oh, goodness. I hope the Jizz coughs up that belt. Cesaro deserves a singles title. He deserves a long singles run. He deserves a ch world championship run. But this could be the setting up for that. Please, Cesaro, get this title. Because we need people that can actually do shit in the ring with big card titles. So, after that... <laughs> You had, in the backstage, you had Ric Flair, you had Charlotte, and then you have Dr. Phil. I'm not a Dr. Phil fan, but he actually did a good job in the backstage se segment. I'm going to give him his credit. He was supposed to be the host of the show, but he basically centerfolded around that and something else a little bit later on, which was kind of funny that he did. And, yeah, he was trying to bring his show onto trying to coach Charlotte as far as ditching her father. She could be on her own and stop cheating and so on and so forth. Good advice. And yes, she needs that advice. But at this point in time, I don't think Ric Flair is going to leave. Dr. Phil should have been talking to the Jizz about that. But it was an okay segment. So the next match was the, um, oh, goodness. No. Kevin Owens gets escorted out of the building. Because... After he lost a match with Cesaro, he goes up to Shane and says, uh, "Don't I'm gonna don't hold me responsible for what I do to Sami Zayn tonight. Oh, you're not gonna be doing any Sami Zayn anything tonight. Go 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 go. Yeah, it's for, uh, yeah, get out. So it's gonna be a fair match between Sami Zayn and freaking AJ Styles for the and, and, and that was pretty cool what Shane did there. He's like, no, I'm not gonna take take this. No, yeah, get out. Oh, LA, feel the power. Yeah, I have to cut that short." New Day comes out and they do their usual shtick. <laughs> and yeah, New Day <laughs> promoting the tag team tournament and they show the fucking bracket. And okay, New Day. I like what they did with the Titan Tron with Bootios and then spilling over and then the tag team championship bracket. That was pretty cool. And yeah, New Day rocks. So you had the Dudleys versus the Lucha Dragons. Okay. Sin Cara gets, not Sin Cara, nope, 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 nope. Kalisto gets injured during the fucking commercial break and they show how he gets injured. And it's like, oh, come on. They're actually going to give it to the Dudleys like this? So, yeah, the Dudleys boy, the Dudley boys win the match. Even though Kalisto was the one that was fucking legal, 
Sankara tries, he tries, he tries, and to no avail, yeah, Dudley's advance in the tag team tournament. And right after they win, <laughs> uh, Enzo and Cass come out. Yeah, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah, you can't teach that. All right. They might meet in the tournament. Because according to the bracket, they may, you know, win their match and then him and the Dudleys may meet, meet next, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Oh, League of Nations. You know what? They kick out, you know, uh, um, okay. King Barrett, you know, wasn't really doing anything, but at least he was doing something. Roman Reigns comes out and delivers a, yeah, a mediocre promo as usual because it's Roman Reigns. He gets a, interrupted by the League of Nations, and it's more mediocrity. It was just, yeah, yeah, why don't you, all three of you come in here, all three of you get your ass kicked, yeah. And then the Wyatts. Now, this is getting very interesting. The Wyatts against the League of Nations, I'm like, why? But at the end of the day, okay, maybe this is a new path for the Wyatts. I'm not, I'm not sure what they're going with this, but then, you know, it was a, you know, a face-off and stuff like that, and it was announced that Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns are going to tag against two of the members of the League of Nations. Um, huh? They, wait, 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 WWE, we're not going to forget the fact that these two motherfuckers were going at it last year, and the whole anything, anyone but you, Roman, anyone but you. No, we're not forgetting that. We're just not. It's just, there's no story that leads up to this. All we know is that the Wyatts are targeting the League of Nations. And there is no fucking reason why they're doing it. And plus, there's no fucking reason why neither one of those teams are in the tag team tournament. I I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, Natalia beat Charlotte by disqualification. Had her in the sharpshooter, and then and the referee gets pulled out by Rick Dick Blair. Dr. Phil was out there, and, and yeah, but uh, we all saw that coming. We knew the title wasn't going to change hands. It's not going to change hands yet. No, they're not going to disrespect this belt. that They shouldn't disrespect this belt that way. They just shouldn't. So Charlotte is still the champion, and maybe there will be a match at payback, which Natalia still won't win. Okay. Sami Zayn, uh, Sami Zayn and AJ Styles interview, which was pretty cool. Because, yes, they've both been there and so on and so forth. And, yeah, I'm, yeah, you're not going to get there because of me. Yeah, that was that type of stuff. Didn't come to blows. It would have been made more interesting if they would have, but they didn't. So, the Usos versus Heath Slater and Curtis Axel. Usos win. Was there any fucking doubt? They do that. Oh! I don't like the social outcast because it's a waste of fucking... They just drew all four of these motherfuckers together and it's just a waste of fucking time and gimmick. It just is. Heath Slater is the male Jillian Hall. He's, that's all he is. That's all he always has been. And it's just like, no. No. I'm glad they lost. And now it's just an advancement of the tournament. They just basically handed the Usos to win. Uh, uh, Gallows and Anderson attacked the Usos after that. Wait a minute. Luke Gallows? I remember uh, the SES. Uh, okay, Gallows and Anderson were running were were running rampant in, in New Japan, and now they're in, now they're here in the WWE. They better make them. They better make something out of them. I'm surprised that they didn't put them in a fucking tournament. I I don't know. And the Usos, the Flying Roman Reigns tag team, I, man, no, man, fuck. <laughs> it's just, no. AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn. Match of the night. Yeah, they went at it, and yeah, not good match. AJ Styles wins, therefore it's not a triple threat at payback. It would have been more interesting if they would have made it a triple threat. Because at least they could have went at it while Roman is uh, 
uh, not doing shit, but they decided not to go that route for some fucking reason. I just hope that I just see AJ Styles going for his forearm and then getting Superman punched from there. That's all I fucking see. Or speared. As a matter of fact, Roman Reigns is going to be doing, you know, seven to eight moves. Yes, that's four more moves than the Jizz, but no, man. Uh, uh, I, I, I wish that AJ Styles would win and get the championship, but I don't think that's going to happen. I just don't think it's going to happen. So you had Jericho in his highlight reel, which was pretty interesting. He interviews himself, and then <laughs> Dean Ambrose comes out and turns it into the Amb turns the highlight reel into the Ambrose Asylum. Yeah, we know where this is going. They're starting a feud because there's nothing left for either one of those two. There just isn't. I hope they do have a match at Payback, and I hope it, they put on a good match. They they both need something to do, and I'm not sure how long Jericho has before he leaves again. This could be his send off. Could be. So, yeah, Apollo Crews beats Adam Rose. Who the fuck didn't see that coming? There's nothing more to go on. They tried to make it a match, but we already knew the fucking result. So, yeah, big deal. So, you had Sheamus and Del Rio of the League of Nations go against Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. Again, this really doesn't make any sense. Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. Are they trying to make the Wyatt's face? I don't know, but to me, it just doesn't make a lick of sense. Roman and Bray ended up winning the match and then having to stare down afterwards. And and but and that just it's like, all right, look again. There was no, I don't I don't see any point to that. There was no way that we're not going to take Roman Reigns seriously as champion because he was getting yelled and booed and and it's basically the same mix as far as how people feel about John Cena, because people think that he's a John Cena 2.0, and I think that he's a Diesel 2.0 because of how they fucking raised him as far as him being a contender or whatever. Him eliminating four dudes at the Survivor Series and eliminating dudes at the Royal Rumble. It's just like what they did with Diesel back in the day. It's just like that. But him being his champion, I still don't think he's fucking ready. <sighs> Why don't his cousin teach him how to talk on a fucking microphone? or something else, he needs to be taken fucking seriously, and he hasn't done anything of any sort to be taken seriously as champion. He just hasn't. Even though they built him up kind of the right way, but they did it way too fucking soon. Or fans just got, you know, the MTV attention span, and if anything is not done exactly when they want, Next thing you know, shit changes. That's just the way certain fans are. So this Raw was an improvement from last week. It was Shane McMahon being in charge. Um, there were some good matches provided, but this is WWE here. There was some garbage involved, but it wasn't show-breaking. At least the Jizz didn't go to the ring. It was kind of cool when um, Cesaro approached the Jizz and stuff like that, and, and yeah, and... He, he spits out, ugh. yeah, the jizz is used to spitting. That should be a, another fucking catchphrase, you know. <laughs> the Miz knows how to spit. So, anyway, Hope Cesaro becomes Intercontinental Champion. Kalisto is still United States Champion. We don't know if he's going to defend his belt or not. We don't even know if he's really injured because of Raw. Um... Uh, I wish that they'd give the WWE World Heavyweight Championship to AJ Styles, but I see a bad chance of that happening. Um, not sure who's going to be challenging the New Day, um, but it's the New Day, and they're the hottest thing around as far as tag team. It's, well, now, you know, some cast may take that, maybe. But then they have Goldust and R-Truth there. And that was another thing that happened on the show when Goldust and R-Truth were you know, the golden truth were in the back and they were talking and Dr. Phil just walks up to him and and just that was pretty hilarious that, that it happened and it's like, alright, cool. So, yeah, that's my raw report review. Any questions, comments below, I would like to hear your opinion. I would like to read your opinions, even if you make a, um, if you reply to me through video, I'm good with that too. 
Um, but <sighs> I'm not really looking forward to payback. I'm just not. Because maybe it could be better than WrestleMania as far as wrestling matches. But then again, it's like, huh? there's nothing really, really built toward it yet. The tag team tournament does continue on SmackDown. So mo most likely by like a week and like a couple of weeks, we'll know who the number one contenders for the tag team championships are. So yeah, drop kicks, body slams, throwing motherfuckers over the top rope, both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.